his love, like, he likes working on I mean, it. Don't say anything. That's not <laughs> true. Do you want me to just skip the question about, about what? Oh. what? Oh, are we <laughs> relax. Uh, amazing. Hi, I'm this Laura Haywood, and this is Live from the Library. Um, we are at the library at the Public Theater, in the beautiful bar and restaurant space uh, where people gather before and after the theater, and currently playing in the public's Ansbacher Theater, The Low Road by Bruce Norris, directed by Michael Greif. It's an epic production featuring 17 actors in 50 roles and I'm delighted to have two of the beautiful actors here with me today Harriet Harris and Crystal Dickinson as you can see we're already having a blast yes. Yes. Um, this is the playbill what an incredible show ladies Thanks. for people who haven't seen it can you give a couple of sentences to describe this epic production let's fight about it <laughs> people would like to see that Think they would like it. Yeah, I mean that's that's <laughs> clickbait. Yeah, you see what you think it is. <laughs> um, you know what I've said it is. I I very simply, I've said that it is a play about where America intersects with God and money. Oh yeah, that's very that's very well said. That's more succinct than I think I could have come up with. How do you describe it, Harriet? I think that's really good. I, I and and I do I do. I'll <laughs> give it right to you. The the. The, there is an emphasis on, on both in the play, but to me the play, like in our blurb, the play is so much about um, inequality. Mm -hmm. And and that to me is the, the soul of the play, where, where the play really lives and where is, as long as that is a problem in America, we really can't become what we need to be. And we're just gonna keep digging a grave for ourselves. Mm -hmm. And that is, uh, that's something that you know, you, you start out looking for equality in this country, and then we, the minute somebody gets on top, they they start looking around at the perks of being on top, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. a new aristocracy begins, and and uh, and you just start the unfairness all over again. I think what's so fun about it is that Bruce manages to just say why, why, mm -hmm. why is it like that? Why do we, why, why are we behaving this way? Why do we believe what we believe? Why? Mm -hmm. And then it, it just and it sits there. It's not comfortable, but Bruce Norris's plays are not comfortable. Yeah. They're they're not meant to be that. And that's a that's a wonderful thing to find in the theater. You know, sometimes it's fun to go and escape, and sometimes it's fun to go and have a mirror put up to you in a way that makes you really learn. And I think this show does that. It's incredibly evocative. Yeah, it does it without lecturing. It doesn't say this is the answer and right. I know the way and the true path is this. It really does say. These are, these are problems, and we got to keep pursuing an answer. We don't know what the answer is, yeah. but we got to keep pursuing a way to, to, to live better. Yeah, I, I think that it's that. worth mentioning that this show takes place in the late 1700s. Um, it it is, it is designed as a period piece, but it still feels quite current. Um, uh, can you talk a little bit about why it's relevant to now? I mean, certainly capitalism and equality are very, very current. Um, is there anything that stands out to you about the parallels between the then and the now? Well, I think that, you know, the, the big thing that people are arguing about now and the, the big question or, you know, what people want is saying, this is our country, right? We built it on these principles of what we should have and how we should have it and what we're entitled to. And that has fueled a lot of what's happening, I think, right now. America first. Mm. And I think it's a, so smart of Bruce to say, well, let's go, let's rewind and see where that idea had birthed itself and explode that. And so we're still asking the same questions, I think, as those founding people, or these people who first came here are asking, mm -hmm. but in a different way. So I think he's managed to put those things together because they are yeah. so interwoven that they can't be, they can't not be. It's almost pr part of the structure of America. I think that's mm -hmm. right. Th those questions yeah. that we keep asking. And it also, uh, one character at one point in the play says, you know, they came here looking for economic opportunity. And you think, some people came here <laughs> looking for religious freedom. Some people came here looking for an economic opportunity. It doesn't, and yeah. the, 
it, that's very complicated. And some people and came against their against will. Against their will because... Some people came as prisoners. Some people, people, that's, some people yeah, yeah, because other people were I'm saying, my economic opportunity is, is going to be built on your back. That's right. And that's it. I think this is a good opportunity for you each to talk about your characters that you play, because you both play more than one, as does most of the cast. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You want to start, Crystal? Um, I enjoy it. <laughs> tell, I, tell everyone who you play. I play, the, um, the first act I play a character, Tizzy, who is, um, this is Truett's right hand, I guess you'd say, but she, she could be a slave, she could be a gun for hire, but she's definitely been, these two have been together for a, mm -hmm. a, a long time, for whatever reason, however it turned out, and I, I feel like the only people we can count on really is us, until, uh -huh. this, until Jim comes along. And then in the second act, I play um, Intombe, who is a billionaireess. And then I play Mary Claire, who is um, a, a courtesan mm -hmm. um, to a Frenchman. Yeah, that storyline is very, I, we don't want to give anything yeah, away, but I, I will yeah. say that I, I love Mary. I do too. And I, what I, I think what I will say about it is, is to not give anything away because if I talk about the characters, I think I might reveal something. So I, what I'll say is what I enjoy, the challenge of finding the relevance as just as we're talking about um, what is the connection of the play at this time, at the time period it is set, mm -hmm. and then what is the relevance now, and how do we make the language and put those things so that they are cohesive and not uh, separate. Mm -hmm. And so it's been my great pleasure to undertake that challenge and to do that for every one of those characters. Mm -hmm. And then I play two characters that say nothing, and I still have that same work to do in a way, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's exciting. Actors always want to want a challenge, you know, a really fun, interesting one, and I think every moment is play. Right. How about you, Harriet? Will you talk about your characters? I play a brothel owner. And a I, businesswoman. A businesswoman, <laughs> a, a 18th century businesswoman, always looking for opportunities. And she's, uh, She's been doing fine, I think, until the soldiers show up and, and they want for free what other people have had to pay for. Mm -hmm. And it puts her at an economic disadvantage, to say the least. Yeah. So that's, that um, she's now, um, you know, possibly, she, in the script it says she opened her house to, to other young women, much younger <laughs> women, that had no place to go. So she was sort of providing a home and in a way opportunity and everybody's kind of living together. And I don't, it doesn't suggest that I'm getting money from them, but I'm making out okay, I think, by serving beer and doing whatever I've been doing up until then. And the, just how, the sh I think the play starts with a shifting economy, with people not being able to keep up mm -hmm. and doing things that may be if you if you had some financial attitude, you wouldn't do, but um, and trying to make ends meet and trying to take advantage of people. So it's in, it, it's interesting. We start in a place where it's a money grab, yeah. mm -hmm. and and so morals are up for grabs and territory is up for grabs. The soldiers are fighting to women keep are America. Yeah. The mm -hmm. women are you know, certainly a commodity, mm -hmm. and and then later I play. A billionaire is too, which is very nice. <laughs> yeah, to there's be. this, there's this Fun. brief uh, very nice trip be. back into the present in the right. middle of this 18th century. Trip. It's lovely being a billionaire. It is so fun being rich, by the way. It seems like it would be awesome lifestyle. That's all I'm saying. Yes, mm -hmm. it does. It's it. Uh, we have very little problem imagining what that would be. <laughs> and uh, and then I later in the in the play I also play somebody very wealthy, but um, who who is making out well. In America at, at the time, but um, her husband, it's her husband's money and his business, and it is all based on a slave driven uh, e economy. And but we're doing, you know, we're doing just fine. Mm -hmm. You have 13 part. bedrooms, and we are, you know, I think she, 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 of course, has no idea who Eleanor Roosevelt is, but she thinks she's, she's that, uh -huh. but she's not. Um, she I, is all for social change. I want to say we are taking questions, or we can take questions from viewers online. So if you're watching on Facebook Live, definitely um, throw a question our way, and we'll we'll see uh, what people want to know. Um, I 
would love to talk about how, so for me, you know, having, I feel like we're in, in the theater in America right now, we're in this like post Hamilton era. Yeah. And the fact that your show takes place in that same era, I think is a really great people, people who might not have been familiar with this time period might now be because of Hamilton. Yeah. And you know, when George Washington gets referenced, there's even a reference to the Schuyler family. Um, and uh, I, I pricked up my ears and it was a good reminder of how how our, I don't even know how to really vote, like to say it, mm -hmm. but I, I think it's it's wonderful to have that through line and be reminded that these are all part of the same story. Yes. Did you do any historical research about this era, about the, the people that were like your characters? Um, no, no, not this time, only because I just feel like this part of our history is so much part of our America. Like, Mm -hmm. It's so much of what I already know about founding fathers. This is the time, right? This is the period. So I didn't feel like I had to do that much. And also, I think Bruce, although there are um, references to real people in the play, mm -hmm. I feel like the play has a lot of magic and creativity in it so that there's a leeway, there's a little leeway for like, you know, we the real realism, but hyper- yeah, it's theatrical. For yeah, sure. theatrical. Mm -hmm. So I, I tried to give myself permission to say, I'm going to be in this world that he's made with the information that I have and see what happens. Mm -hmm. uh, what's the rehearsal le process like for a show like this that has 17 actors, 50 parts? It is epic in every way. Um, is it different than working on a show like, say, Thoroughly Modern Millie or uh, Clyburn Park? I think those would be very different shows too. Yeah, yeah sure. Like the, um, we had. There I guess were, Millie also has a big cast. <laughs> yes, it did. Cast. But the, uh, I, the first few days of rehearsals, we didn't have Chikuti. He came for the first day, uh -huh. so we we read through, and then we really had to just do what we could without him because he was working someplace else. Okay. And uh, and then and that meant we were up on our feet really quickly. And that turned out, I think, to be a virtue in some ways because Michael Greif is so smart, and having done so many musicals, he really understood what was in front of him in terms of you've got to get all these people on and off stage, you've got to get all this furniture on and off, and the actors have to be the ones doing it because we're not going to have a crew. <laughs> oh, so it is so pretty. A lot of yes. it was how do you, what's happening off stage. So and more of a get, logistical process than a character building, and then yeah, and and while he, but Michael is able to sort of keep track of everything. He doesn't he doesn't miss a trick. Yeah, he kind of chisels you as he, as you go along. So that the paramount is what Harriet said to get that stuff, you know, so we don't kill each other because there's seventeen of us. Sometimes yeah. all of us are on stage at once, and that was absolutely necessary. But. He's always watching you. <laughs> That's yeah, for sure. Got, and you think, oh, God, I can't believe, you know, I did this one thing tonight, and I know I'm, you know, it was just, it was an accident, and I know I'm going to get a note about no, it. Because uh, <laughs> he'll note it. He won't, he won't go, he oh, that's an me. anomaly. He'll say, I really don't want that ever happening again. Uh -huh. So <laughs> he has to make a point of it. But it is, it, in a way, it's lovely, because you know he's not just sitting there zoning out, thinking about, Evan Hansen, uh -huh. or you know, like, oh, I've got this big trip in front of me or something. He's really actively watching us, and I think he really cares about all of us on the show, and that it maintains what what he and Bruce wanted yeah, for the and show. I was going to say that that's part of him being so. It, it, uh, as we do the play, I realize it's absolutely necessary that things aren't accurate because it's a play that needs that kind of. The tone has to be a certain. Mm -hmm. And if you do deviate, you can mess with that. We all get shifty. Yeah. So it was necessary. Looking it, back, yeah. It does feel like a very well choreographed dance. Yeah. Uh, and the staging mm -hmm. is so beautiful. David Corrin's designs are it's gorgeous. gorgeous isn't it? um, and mm -hmm. the the way the theater is is set up, it's it's not quite in the round, but you've got audience on three sides, and they're looking down at the stage, um, which lends itself very well to the story. I think. Too. Yes. I think so because everybody's seeing something different. Oh, questions. Yes, we have a couple of questions, and we're actually running out of time, so we're going to do these quickly. Um, was there anything challenging about portraying your characters? Yeah. I mean, I, I think yeah, because I can tell by watching these would be a challenge. Well, 
there's all these the emotional challenge that brings with any play, right? But I would say for us was what we're talking about with Michael. We have we had our ideas about what we wanted, but Michael could see the whole thing. So some there were times when like I really feel so passionate that this should be this. And Michael's like, no, oh. no, that that's. And then you realize looking back, like, yeah, that might have been right for me, but that's not right for the whole thing. Uh -huh. So that was a challenge. The challenge is to say like, okay, that to do this, okay. And Harriet, I'm going to give you this one. What's your favorite thing about being in such a big play? That it, that there's so many wonderful actors to be with. And that was true the very first day of the reading. I just thought, this is going to be heaven to be here with all these lovely, talented people. Well, if you want to be challenged by uh, your theater-going experience, and I think everyone should be, this is the show to choose. The Low Road by Bruce Norris, now playing at the Public Theater, starring these two beautiful ladies and an incredibly talented ensemble, 17 actors, 50 roles, um, a beautiful design. I really can't say enough about this show, and I'm so happy that you guys joined me for Live at the Thank Library. You. Thank you, Lois. Great pleasure. Yeah. Thank you so much, and thanks to everyone who joined us online. Thank, Thank you. you.